And as always, I think we will come across all kinds of interesting things on our way there. Interestingly enough, we will be passing by, I think, Kadagi Lake. And around the lake, there's quite a nice park called Bogyake Park, dedicated to Bogyake Ong San. I haven't been to this lake and that park yet, so I thought I'd take advantage of this trip to walk through the park. There's a very famous restaurant there, kind of a high-end establishment that looks like one of the old river barges, you know, those... I don't even know how to describe them. You know, it's like two dragons, one on each side, with the boat kind of built between them, like two huge pontoons. I think of them as royal river barges. And this famous restaurant is built on one of those floating on the lake. It's supposed to be uh, quite the sight. Google Maps tells me that I can get to Kandagi Lake down this way, maybe a, you know, three quarters of a kilometer or something like that. Well, I seem to have found it. Not sure I remember the name. <laughs> but I think it's Kandagi Lake. And there is the restaurant I was talking about, that big yellow thing you can just see through the trees. That would be Karawike Palace, Karawik Palace, something like that. There's a gate here into the park. I don't know whether there's an entrance fee, there might be. There's a, uh, a window here of some kind. Let's see what they have to say. Hello. Just go in. Okay. So she just uh, waved me into the park. So I guess there is no entrance fee to walk around the park. I know there's one around here. It's more of a jogging exercise park. And that's kind of a boardwalk all the way around. And I remember reading to go in there, there's some kind of an uh, entrance fee. Well, it's a bit of a construction to get past first. Oh man, look at the color of the water over here. That's like an emerald green. Very nice. Of course, it could mean that the water is unhealthy and just filled with uh, algae, but from a distance, the green color looks nice. And they have a nice uh, boardwalk here too. Ooh. Over here, that is definitely a thick coating of algae or something. And I guess that's what's uh, making this water green. It's uh, stagnant. There's the famous Karawik, Karawik Palace, modeled on one of those huge royal barges on the uh, water. Ah, it's an amazing sight. And I think when I was talking about it earlier, I said it was like two dragons, but from here they don't look like dragons, they look like ducks, like uh, birds of some kind. Ah, oh, this is nice. Then we can just walk around the edges of the uh, lake along this boardwalk and uh, see how close we can get to this uh, exclusive restaurant. Certainly looks impressive from here. <laughs> uh oh, looks like I might have to do a little bit of a balance beam in order to walk around the park. Oh yeah, I can just walk along the edge here, hold on to the handrail. Shouldn't be a problem. There you go. Just a nice narrow spot for your feet.
barrier overcome. That's kind of an interesting illustration of uh, differences between, say, Myanmar and uh, Canada. You know, maybe the whole morning, pros and cons, as it were. You know, I go to the train station here and I have a fair amount of difficulty buying a ticket. But when I find a little thing like that, that I know I can walk across without a problem, I can just do it. People leave it up to me to decide what I want to risk. In Canada, of course, if you try to walk across a, a, a hole in the bridge like that, <laughs> there's no way. The whole thing would be blocked off and there'd be security and all kinds of uh, barriers and people would definitely yell at you if you tried to walk across a, something like that. But here, they trust you to uh, know your own limits. And I think I'm able to uh, walk across a, a little beam like that. <laughs> In fact, I've got another one right ahead of me. Yeah, so I guess this is what these uh, boardwalks are made out of. Kind of fake wood things going across. Well, this one's a bit uh, trickier. In fact, the easiest thing would be just to climb over the fence and go around it. So I was just thinking, by the time you got to this point, you have to have pretty good balance to make it across that beam. And I'm sure I could do it, but might as well just uh, go around it. I don't want to get dumped in that water with my GoPro. Okay, now we've run into a real barrier. What is going on here? I am inside the park and all of this is blocking my way that direction. There's no way of getting across that. And uh, there is a gate here, a locked gate. So now I cannot get out. <laughs> It looks like I might have to backtrack <laughs> to get out of the park and go over all those barriers. I mean, I could climb the fence, to be honest. But I think I'll just uh, walk back the way I came. I don't want to have security come thundering down on me because I climbed the fence. <laughs> That's so strange. <sighs> there I am. Welcome to the park, she said. No, you don't have to buy a ticket, she said. Go right on in. But she didn't tell me that you can't get out again. You know? <laughs> Hotel California. You can check in anytime you want. But you can never leave. So, Kandogi Lake and Bogioke Park. Same thing. They'll let you in. But then you can't get out again. Hmm. It occurs to me that I'm probably not seeing this park at its best. I think uh, this place would be much busier in the evening when it gets cool. That's when most people would come here for a stroll. I always seem to find myself out and about during the day when it's uh, the hottest. 
just sort of my uh, daily routine, I guess. I intended to just go back out the same gate that I came in and then walk over that direction and go around the lake that way. But since I'm here, I thought I would uh, yeah, walk along the boardwalk in this direction and just see where it takes me. And this is the direction I'm walking. Looks like there's a white bridge there. And it looks like that whole complex is sealed off with that blue wall. So we probably can't go in there, whatever that is. But we'll find out. It's nicely shaded most of the way along here. So that's nice. And I've reached the spot where the walkway goes out into the water. Oh, hey, look at that. Blocked off again. <laughs> The world does not want me to go where I want to go. I do see people on uh, the other side. I think they're uh, fishing over there. And there's the uh, palace again. <laughs> da -da -da -da. A gap in the road. Yeah, they don't make it easy for a poor tourist uh, pedestrian Doug to go for a walk around the lake. Again, I could get past this barrier if I really wanted to. Though, to be honest, it wouldn't be that easy. I mean, they have these bits sticking out over the edge and... Uh, to get around here, you know, you'd be dangling out over the water to get over there. And I would still do it, but I don't know um, how far this goes, you know. I might end up just hitting another barrier over there and have to turn around and come straight back again. Well, I've come this far. I think I'm just going to go around here and uh, see how far I can go. Go check out those uh, fishermen down there, see what's around the corner, and then maybe I can come back again. Ow! Already jammed up my knee. <laughs> so, just going around the corner, nice and carefully. And I think I can uh, step there safely and uh, there, I got past the barrier. <laughs> I can feel the Minister for Tourism in his office in the government suddenly shivering with fear you know he doesn't know why and that's because a canadian tourist is climbing over barriers and putting himself in danger <laughs> i am hoping i can continue around this way you know we'll see how far it goes ah, it's beautiful out here on the lake was just chatting with a group of uh, young fishermen there and they were telling me that uh, it's, you can't really go this way. They said it's uh, too dangerous. But we'll see. Maybe that's the way that they came and they just think it's too dangerous for me. It actually looks like it's uh, more complete up ahead on the other side of this gap. But perhaps this gap is uh, too big too wide to get across safely. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, on the other side of this barrier, it looks safer than where I currently am, except there's another uh, large barrier up ahead there. But once again, I feel like I've come this far. I might as well uh, go a little bit further. Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> I just want to get to that barrier and look around the corner and uh, see what's going on. Well, that was easily uh, accomplished. But uh, I wonder what's going on here. They have this uh, tarp down on the uh, boardwalk, but I think that's only there to uh, protect it from the paint. So I think all of this is solid, no problem. And I see a man up ahead there, perhaps one of the painters. And we'll see what he has to say about a uh, tourist walking along his unfinished uh, boardwalk. Got a duck under here. Oh, look at that. So it's not, uh, not finished yet. Oh, it looks like I could step across here, no problem. Walk along the edge, no problem. I passed by a group of workers back there and, you know, they were puzzled to see me, but uh, they don't speak English, so they couldn't really tell me not to uh, come this way. Now I've reached a uh, fence. And I think they might actually be uh, sleeping here at night. Find out. Oh. Hello. So far so good. My one concern is that I'll eventually make it to the other side, get back to shore, and then I'll find uh, all the gates locked and I won't be able to uh, get out of the park at all. Ta-da! <laughs> I made it, I think. And I'm guessing that this sign says it is closed and you're not allowed to go there. But that's where I went. So let's continue this way. I'm starting to think that an ice cold drink would be nice right about now. I don't see anything like that around here. I wonder if that is actually Schwedegon Pagoda. Have I been coming that far? It actually does look like Schwedegon. Ah, oh, nice. So I was partially right. That is Schwedegon Pagoda over there. But in terms of Bogioke Park, this side is not Bogioke Park. It's actually on the other side of the lake. That is Bogioke Park over there. And if I can get around there, then there's a road that leads up to the uh, museum. I'm starting to hear some thunder as these dark clouds are moving in. There's a little bit right there. So maybe we'll get some rain this afternoon. But I have my trusty umbrella, so no worries there. It's interesting that those guys were fishing because I'm thinking back to all the signs, you know, no, no sex, no swimming, no this, no that. But I don't remember ever seeing no fishing on that sign of things you can't do. So maybe by the law of omission, they think, yeah, the sign says we doesn't say we can't, so uh, let's go fishing. I wonder what they catch in that lake. Ah, it's beautiful scenery, though. Look at the size of that tree. It's gorgeous. Nice blue skies, nice green water. A little fountain. 
thunder. All we need is a cold drink. Well, I was wishing for a cold drink. And here is the Garden Bistro. I imagine I can uh, get a simple Coke or something like that here. Let's find out. Hello. Just a, a cold drink. Yeah, cold is that drink. Yeah. yeah, is that okay? Um, yeah, really yeah just sit here. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah, no lunch, just a just a drink. Look at that. Table has a uh, press for service button. I'm not convinced it works, but it's a nice idea. Ah, oh, look at this. Lovely spot to sit right out uh, near the lake. Nice and cool. Beautiful view out in that direction. And let's see what we can get for a drink. Ooh. Dare I go for a vanilla milkshake? Got a mango smoothie, mango yogurt smoothie. The uh, the yogurt smoothie seemed to be unavailable, so I went for a banana shake and a coke. And uh, he uh, set up a fan for me, which was very nice. Ah, oh, it's just a lovely place to sit. So oh, my banana shake showed up and my Coke, yeah, nice uh, presentation, little slice of lime there. That's how you know you're at a fancy place, ice cold. Let's see, I think I'll go for my uh, banana shake first, get it while it's as uh, cold as possible. Very good. Mm, real strong uh, banana flavor. My one problem with uh, shakes in general is they're always way too small. I mean, you get this big glass, but it's tapered down to the bottom. And I find uh, two or three good strong pulls and it's gone. And you find yourself wishing you had like five more of them. Oddly enough, that is the one thing I really miss about Canada or North America in general, McDonald's shakes. For whatever reason, and I, I've never heard an explanation for this, in all of Asia that I've been to, when you go to a McDonald's, they don't make shakes. They just don't make them. In Canada, at a McDonald's, they have a McDonald's shake. I grew up loving those things and, and I would get them whenever I could. I just love them. Um, but overseas, McDonald's uh, don't carry them. I've never known why. Could be a milk thing. Milk is not as popular a drink uh, in Asia as it is in Canada. And of course, a McDonald's milkshake probably has no milk in it at all, but it looks like milk, you know, and they call it a milkshake even though it has no dairy products in it. I don't know what they make it out of, but I find them delicious. I left the fancy restaurant, enjoyed my milkshake and my Coke very much. Popped into the bathroom there to put some uh, band-aids on my toes. For some reason, I ended up with a bunch of blisters on this walk. Don't know why that would be, but uh, luckily I had uh, band-aids in my knapsack. Could get all my toes uh, covered up. And I'm trying to follow a trail out of this park now and head to the museum. 
but I don't really know where I am <laughs> again. <laughs> It's pretty funny. I stopped here at the side of the road to bandage up another one of my toes. My feet are really suffering today for some reason. I don't know what's going on. But I'm sitting here and all these uh, taxi drivers start saying things to me. And I'm wondering what's going on. And they're pointing up at the tree. And apparently, I'll show you, all these uh, branches keep uh, crashing down from the tree, breaking off. And me being me, of course, I choose to sit down to put on a Band-Aid in the exact spot where a tree is threatening to uh, come crashing down on my head. Ooh. Bit of a uh, garbage dump here too. <laughs> 